What's up guys? It's Taco here with Amped Up Outdoors. Got another Taco's tip for you. I'm sitting here at the HQ and I just put together a new panfish box. Um, I went pan fishing this weekend. Had some difficulty locating one of my boxes. I don't know if I left it on my boat. Yeah, but it's not where it was. So I took some time and I put together another panfish box, mainly so I can throw it in the truck, take it out on the kayak, be ready to go. Basically here, this is my idea of a panfish box. You know, some of the contents I have in here, I've got some, some panfish assassins, a couple of different colors. I got like a ba baby bass color. I have like a black shad. Yeah. I got some Mr. Crappy shad poles. These are kind of nice if you need to make a little bit bigger presentation or you're getting a bigger class of fish. You know, this will help weed them, them bigger fish out from them small fish. And he's going to fall off my hand. But again, color-wise... I've got like a chartreuse pepper with a white belly. I've got the infamous electric chicken, the chartreuse with the, the bubblegum pink. And then I've got a blue black glitter with a white belly. Also have my faves. I've got my Busta Bait Stingers, you know, probably my three favorite colors. The lime truce, the clear with the, the metal flake, and then the white with the clear metal flake belly. Also have a selection of tube jigs. Like I said, a lot of my stuff is going to be very, very natural colors. You know, like I've got a pumpkin with some purple and green glitter. I've got like a pumpkin seed. Same, same thing, purple and green glitter. I forget what this color is called. It's basically a gold tube tail and it's, it's kind of like a root beer tube and then you know, it's hard to go wrong with just good old chartreuse. That's basically all the colors I have in this little panfish box. And I'll catch perch, crappie, bluegill, bass, get a rare pickerel every now and then. I have an assortment of jig heads. Most of them are very, very light, 132nd ounce, 164th. I think that's the biggest one, and that's, I believe, 116th ounce. But most of them are, are these real tiny little ones. You know, same thing for the tube jig heads. They're a little 132nd ounce. You know, they're little, little tiny lightweights, and that's going to allow them, them soft plastics to do their thing. It's, you know, if you put too heavy of a head in, it's going to dive. You know, I do have, like I said, a little bit heavier head. If I get to the point where I'm casting like a shad pole or a panfish assassin by itself, it's not on like a float and fly rig. Then I have a selection, 
couple of different colors of, of hair jigs. Like I said, these are ones that I actually tied up myself. It's got what's called, it's a material, it's a herringback flash boo. So at times it looks purple, at times it looks green. You know, it's worked real well for me in the past. Like I said, and then I have the little 164th ounce hair jigs that you can pick up down at Fishbones or you know, any any of your local tackle stores. Got an assortment of floats. I got some of the bigger torpedo floats. I've got some smaller Mr. Crappy foam floats. And then I always have the Mr. Crappy rattling pairs. Um, again, I'll I'll switch floats. Like I said, if I'm throwing a heavier jig, I'm going to throw these, these bigger torpedo floats. You know, for most of my, my tubes and my stingers and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and use either one of these Mr. Crappy foam floats or one of the rattling pairs. The last thing I have... And this is, is this one of the things that I don't want to tell everyone about, but I kind of want to help people go out and have some good experiences just like I do. I have mummy worms. They are mummified wax worms. They're nice for this type of thing because you can throw them in your box. They don't need to be refrigerated. They're not in like a formaldehyde solution or anything like that. You know, you just pop them out and they're, they're dry. I mean, it's, they have a little softness to them, but not terrible. And sometimes that little bit of extra scent will help save the day. Like I said, if I can get by without using them, I don't, if it's a slow bite, or I know I'm where I should be, but I'm not getting any bites, and I've switched things up, I'll pop one on, and they come in a couple of different colors, I have, I have some, some green, I have some natural, and then I have some pink. Like I said, so get yourself a couple of cans of them mummy worms and get them in your box. You can thank me later. But basically, all in all, this is my idea of a perfect panfish box. Like I said, it's, it's pretty well laid out. One thing that I'm always careful with is I don't mix soft plastic colors. Um, because if you perp a chartreuse with a, a white, you know, over time, one color is going to bleed. Yeah. I've just sat here and looked at this and I realized that this really needs one thing. To make it a perfect panfish box. And I've got it right here. It's my amped up slap. So we're going to slap my box up. Get some amped up stuff on here. That way everybody knows who I am. And what I'm about. And there we go. Now I have 
the perfect panfish box. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Like I say, if you see me out and about, you need some slaps for your tackle box, just give me a shout. Give us a like and a subscribe. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.